Hello Sea Wolves, hope you are enjoying your Saturday with a little bit of some uh, fresh, uh, maybe it's coffee, maybe it's something else, who knows, all I'm saying today is cheers. Ah, that's good for the Saturday afternoon, huh? So, uh, I hope you're all well. I, I want to start by saying thank you all for your really amazing uh, comments and reactions to the show uh, yesterday. I totally didn't uh, expect that. I wasn't aware that I was, uh, you know, storytelling and, uh, and stuff, I guess. I only later realized, like, oh, okay, because of all of your comments. And so, um, thank you. It was really lovely to, uh, you know, get so many uh, very sweet and nice reactions uh, back. And, uh, yeah, I really appreciated it. So, thanks for that. Um, on to, on to uh, today. So uh, exciting but sad news uh, in the uh, Jules Verne. We'll get into that in a little bit. First I want to uh, you know look at kind of what's happened over the last uh, few days with the uh, uh, Van der Globe because um, you know exciting stuff uh, going on. And uh, let's uh, pick up the, um, the map here. And uh, well obviously we can see uh, that uh, the lead hasn't really changed but uh, what I really want to start to show with is Jean Le Cam. I mean, Jean Le Cam. Yes, we can. My gosh. Uh, you know, uh, again in third, or we might say he's basically over the entire week just held on to his third place. And I mean, am I the only one? Or is this whole race starting to feel like, you know, all the boats are going every which where, making their plans, and there's one little brave boat somewhere, you know, mostly in the middle or somewhere doing something quite different. And that is Jean Le Cam, going right through the middle with a steady hand, always the shortest route. And just every once in a while, he just suddenly shows up right there in the front, in the lead or right behind the leaders uh, ahead because he just knows what he's doing. He's just doing really amazingly well in this race. And I have to say, last week, I think we're talking five days ago, when he kind of, you know, went a little bit too far, for my mind, uh, you know, to the east and, uh, and to the south early. And it looked like that uh, new uh, high pressure that was coming through was kind of going to hit, you know, hit him right, uh, you know, on his nose as he was going. For a moment there, I thought, now he's had it. I thought, you know, linked out and a PVR, they're going to keep moving there, they're right ahead of it, but he's going to get stuck there and we're going to see him really fall back all the way, uh, you know, somewhere to the end of the, you know, the front of the fleet somewhere to place eight or nine or 10 or something like that. I really thought that was going to happen, but no, no, some, some way, somehow, he managed to skip right along the edge of that system and stay in third place. I mean, Amazing, right? I think we can all uh, agree that uh, the man is just a legend and he's doing really, really well uh, in this race. I was saying yesterday in the in the chat during the show uh, that, uh, yeah, he's like very high on my list of uh, potential winners. If he keeps going like this, it feels like he can beat any of them. And it's like he's just the wolf in the, in the pack just waiting, um, you know, for all the other boats to have some minor damage or whatever. And he'll just one by one, just, uh, you know, pick them off, uh, uh, let's say. So, super cool what he's doing. And uh, I also uh, wanted to uh, take a quick look at uh, another hero that's fighting his way back from the back. And uh, that, of course, is uh, Jeremy Bijou on board of uh, Shirel. He's really doing well, uh, you know, as you guys uh, can see, maybe better to see it here in the uh, windy map, uh, that uh, he's kind of made his way more or less uh, through the doldrums. He still has a little bit to go, but he has uh, wind, it seems like. So he will be through there, and then, uh, you know, he'll have great wind to start his pursuit of the uh, kind of aft pack within the uh, fleet, or let's call it the middle fleet uh, uh, for now. And um, yeah, I think that three, four days with a little luck, he will catch up uh, with the middle fleet. And um, yeah, uh, considering everything that has happened and the enormous time loss that he incurred, that is really an incredible uh, feat. So, um, you know, the fact that he is really staying focused everything uh, forward. I think that's uh, super cool. Mucho, mucho respect. And, uh, and in that fleet, uh, we also uh, see, I think, oh no, actually, she's a little bit ahead of that. We see um, 
one of our heroes Medallia with uh, with Pip hair now in 24th place so she's fallen a little bit back she was mostly kind of uh, team battling with one planet one ocean who now seems to be ahead by you know a little bit um, but overall still doing well and uh, in the middle fleet so uh, you know she's definitely with one of the oldest boats in the fleet doing really really uh, well for what she's doing so uh, amazing job there uh, Pip uh, also uh, Lucky 10 so that was a boat that a little bit surprised me because uh, Lucky 10 was one of my favorites I really thought wow this looks like a very uh, uh, very fast boat of course uh, uh, Armel also really coming from the uh, from the mini uh, circuit where he just dominated really hard and um, yeah, in interesting. I really thought that that boat would be a lot faster, that he would be, uh, in, that we would find him somewhere in the leading uh, top five or six pretty much throughout the race. Also because he has, you know, no Van der Globe experience, but just so much experience with, you know, longer races and stuff. But um, yeah, for, for whatever reason, he had, of course, some, uh, some problems. So uh, uh, understandable that he's there, but I expected more. Uh, and then let's uh, let's look at the front so uh, yeah big news again yesterday uh, about Alex that he uh, probably hit something in the water we don't know uh, and uh, damaged uh, one of the uh, rudders and uh, the latest on that is that he took it out of the water and they are now in the process of fixing it but that he has the boat well under control with uh, one rudder most of the time they're only using one of them um, so so that's fine for now I guess he's on the right tack so uh, no steering problems uh, uh, at current and uh, if I look at his speed right now he's doing um, you know 11 point something uh, knots which is pretty much uh, you know similar to what his friends that are like around where he is now uh, are also uh, doing although they're both a little bit faster so maybe he's still holding back a little bit but uh, yeah I think should be fine right the rudder itself the blade not the most complicated uh, thing to fix if it's not completely ruined and as I understand it it's not uh, major super big uh, damage so you know I'm fairly confident that he'll probably be able to fix it and just get the boat 100% but um, yeah it sucks right I think a lot of the fans uh, uh, you know they really feel it you really feel it in your heart where you really want this man to do well and uh, you know such an accomplished sailor and it's too bad to see him uh, go from a very comfortable lead uh, you know falling back obviously through the very serious damage that he had uh, with the, with some structural uh, problems in the bow of the boat and now uh, with damage to the rudder you know so far uh, he hasn't really been very lucky in this uh, race I would say but hey there's still plenty of time uh, for his luck to change so let's hope this is the final uh, damage and that from now on he's just able to put the pedal to the metal and actually uh, go for it uh, then uh, also notably uh, we had uh, linked out that uh, damaged its foil in the last uh, little over 48 hours I guess and uh, the news on that is that um, uh, his team and him uh, obviously uh, parlayed and uh, talked about uh, what to do and finally decided that it was best to uh, reduce the size of the foil quite substantially. So uh, there's also some video of that uh, that I'll put here. And so uh, he basically uh, reduced the size of the foils and the reason for that is that when the foil is in the water the, the force against it coming from the front so you're also bending it that way uh, is very uh, strong and I guess they believe that uh, with the damage that occurred it would uh, have a very high risk of maybe breaking off completely uh, and then of course you run the risk of the the parts maybe damaging other parts of the boats maybe the rudder so this is something you don't want and so by reducing the size of the foil they also reduce the amount of power kind of uh, you know risking it breaking off and I guess that uh, with the remaining uh, foil they feel confident that he still has some extra lift from it um, and they feel that uh, you know with some with some patching up of the structure which I think he also did yesterday uh, he should be able to complete the race uh, with the foil as is without being too afraid of it uh, still shearing off and doing maybe uh, more damage and uh, looking at his speed he's uh, really booking doing 21.3 knots right now so I'd say <coughs> sorry I'd say that uh, Thomas Rion is uh, completely back in the race again and uh, you know trying like hell to make his way uh, back to 
the run leader, Apivia, Charlie Dalin, uh, of course, already a very well established sailing hero in France. And uh, yeah, I mean, amazing uh, to see, uh, you know, young guy, talented guy, really a great uh, sailing talent and uh, amazing uh, boat, not as radical looking as the Hugo Boss, uh, but definitely one of the uh, latest uh, uh, designs and um, you know featuring that fully enclosed uh, cockpit the latest foils and all that uh, all that good stuff and amazing to see that it definitely works right we've seen basically a pvr pretty close to uh, linked out and uh, hugo boss for the last two weeks or so most of the time he was in third or fourth position but uh, over the last week we've seen him just you know grab the front as hugo boss was uh, falling back first of course a little uh, like a day and a half the lead to uh, linked out and then uh, yeah Charlie basically took over and never let go and uh, we have to admit it that by now he's built up a pretty uh, comfortable um, lead you know all in all he's about so 290 nautical miles ahead of linked out and then PRB is the next uh, and, of, and of course yes uh, yes we can with 360 nautical miles that's uh that's quite a lead really i mean that's that's three times about uh, the size of the coastline of my country and I, and I know how long it takes me to sail uh past there so that's a pretty good lead that's uh, that's something that is not going to be easy to uh catch up to uh basically it's more or less at their current speeds it's kind of a full day ahead of the rest so if he would you know completely stop it would still take you know um uh, uh, Thomas on uh, linked out or uh, Jean Le Cam probably up to maybe a day of, uh, of sailing to catch up to him so you know in that terms it doesn't feel like so much but still that's a pretty comfortable lead especially in this position going into the southern ocean now um, that's something that he can really you know if he manages to hold on to it and there's no accidental damage or anything like that this gives him a really great platform to uh, you know very likely hopefully maybe win the race which brings me to the trophy Jules Verne and uh, unfortunately uh, the uh, Maxi the Edmund uh, the Rothschild has uh, postponed uh, racing at this time they uh, they hit a foil and uh, they felt uh, as I understand it quite unlucky uh, so far with uh, the weather and of course because this is a record setting uh, attempt if they fall too far back uh, from from the current record then it doesn't really make sense to uh, go for it now they still were at the moment that they kind of quit the race still a bit ahead of uh, ID Sports uh, previous record but they felt that uh, because of the damage to one of the foils they couldn't uh, quite uh, push the boat to its maximum which they you know would have to do later in the race in order to stay ahead of the uh, current record and so I don't know if they will uh, quickly repair and then uh, try again or uh, what they will do no definite news on that uh, right now but um, you know that's the state of the race there and uh, so Debo ultimate 3 uh, still in the race as far as I can see and uh, yeah they are they are doing uh, okay uh You know, estimating that they are somewhere slightly past uh, the Cape Verde Islands uh, uh, right now. And uh, yeah, as more news uh, comes in, I'll of course try to keep you uh, updated. But um, yeah, that is pretty much all the news that uh, there is on there uh, right now. And that's it for the update today. Hope you enjoyed. Please uh, like, subscribe, and uh, make sure to share the video with anybody you think might have an interest in this uh, matter. Uh, and uh, if you want to become a backer, supporter, go to see wallstv.com uh, also just you know for more background and to find all the videos and some articles uh, you know you can find all of that on the website and uh, i'll see you tomorrow